Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna to be talking about a rising offlane hero in the current meta. On my tier list yesterday, I put it in the B tier. However, I might have to change my opinion on that. We'll see. We're gonna go over Omni Knight throughout this video. I've just watched through this entire game two times. I've taken a lot of lessons out of this hero, things you can implement. So if you don't know anything about Omni Knight offlane, why is it good? Let's talk about the basics so far. What makes this hero more of a core than a support? Well, first off, it's E is almost solely a core ability. It does damage based on your base damage. Right, so not added damage, items like Death So won't really help your damage. However, at 10, you get a 50 base damage talent. This is one of the best talents in all of Dota, probably in the top 10 for level 10 talents. It's absolutely insane, because not only does it just make you hit hard, you also get a huge increase on your damage on your Hammer of Purity. Then, that 10 talent also synergizes with the Shard, which makes it where every six seconds, your next auto attack will fire a hammer of purity. So essentially you get double that bonus base damage, one for the auto attack, one for the hammer of purity. So this hero can deal about a thousand pure damage in an instant. With Conda, you can do way more. He doesn't go Conda this game. Uh, I think for pro games, you have to be a lot more reasonable with your items, a lot more defensive because people will target you if you don't. But we're gonna cover the standard build uh, the safe build that I think is more reliable in today's video, and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game Leap website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So the first thing that's really nice about Omni Knight is that Hammer Purity is only 30 mana. This means in the laning stage, you should use it almost as much as you want, unless you're concerned about feeding stick charges. But for instance, on the range creep, an auto attack plus Hammer Purity kills from just above half, right? So it's really easy to use. In terms of starting items, he's got components for two bracers and a magic wand. Uh, people are doing this build now where they have like basically max stats, which I think is good. Um, if you need to, you can eat one of the branches, right? If you're running low on tangos or the lane is hard, you can eat one of the branches. He doesn't do that this lane because this lane is quite easy. Coddle is a terrible laner, so he's chilling. But yeah, from there, anytime you want to apply aggression, the E slows by 14. It's not really that great. It's not some insane slow, but it is a five second slow. So it's pretty long and definitely decent for helping your support trade with the position five, especially. And yeah, the last thing I'd like to say for the laning stage before, honestly, I move on because it's really basic. You have good damage, contest denies, you can heal yourself, uh, which is a 90 heal as well as 90 damage. So it's really easy to trade, uh, is that you have really good base stats. You have 315 movement speed, five base armor and 70 damage with this starting build. So it's really easy to just lane strictly based on your base stats, right? It makes the laning stage really, really easy. It's the reason why Slaughter tends to have a good laning stage, right? High base armor, I think Slaughter has six and a half, seven, uh, and then really high damage makes it easy to lane. So from there, in terms of skill build, you're gonna take two points in your Q because it scales really well. The E doesn't scale nearly as well, so definitely scale the Q at level three. And then from there at level four, you have two options. If your lane is pretty hard and you need to dispel some sort of stun or slow, definitely take the W. It's not a bad ability. It gives a decent amount of regen. It's going to heal you for about 50 health, which obviously isn't incredible, but for only 80 mana, it's not bad. And if you're dispelling something like CM Frostbite, it's going to be worth it, right? If you're worried about some sort of root or slow, like a Venomancer support, it's obviously a great idea to have Repel. Even against Gyrocopter, he could use it against Homing Missile and Rocket Barrage to trade. And that's a decent option, but he was having such a good game, such an easy lane, where he's just opting for the better farming build and the higher pressure build. So in terms of the laning stage, you don't farm neutrals, so Toby unironically statics the wave under the tier one for like a whole minute. I'll just go back a minute so you can see, and I'm gonna speed through this. He just statics the wave here, and then just keeps denying and denying and denying, because he's trying to stop the gyro from getting lane creeps. He wants to force gyro to hit strictly neutrals, which gyro does not want to do. It's not terrible for gyro, Right, Gyro can kill neutrals, but it's not optimal by at all. And you'll see the net worth reflects this. Lane creeps are the best creeps in the game, guys, early on. They're, they're, you can't out jungle lane creeps unless you're playing like Alk or Naga, right? It's just not gonna happen. And so, yeah, just keeping the lane back also takes the net worth away from a hero like the Coddle, who might wanna scoop in and farm it. And he even runs at the Coddle here, getting very, very aggressive. Now, yeah, I like that he takes the point in W here. And, you can take the point in W and take the point in ulti whenever. This is my next point. Just take it whenever you need it, okay? If you want to get super aggressive and dive the tower, you should have a point in W. It's a six second duration, flat immunity, really long, just at level one. It's flat six seconds, which means you can get aggressive for two seconds and then TP on the end of it. For instance here, 
he gets TP'd on by uh, uh, by the Brewmaster, who if if he wanted to kill the Omni Knight, would have to do a very specific set of plays. He'd have to split, purge the W, which you can do. Omni Knight Repel is completely dispellable. He would have to dispel it <laughs> and then stun him. It would just take way too long. And so getting aggressive, the W enables this really beautiful play. I love that he executes on it like that. Forces a Brewmaster TP, which is terrible for Brewmaster. TPing with no kill is absolutely awful for his game and then gets out. Really, really great. Now for your ulti, if you're against the mid Monkey King, Repel is still good, but you're gonna want a point in your ulti, right? It's actually a really strong level one ability. For only 100 mana, you get five seconds of immunity, right? Physical immunity. It's good. And it's on two heroes and you can even use that on yourself for 10 seconds straight, right? This is a strong spell. You should not skip it if it's a good game for it, right? If you're dying to a Monkey King, if you're dying to a Sven, right? or whatever it is, some sort of physical damage, if you're afraid of your teammates dying to Night Stalker, you should be skilling your ulti. Do not skip it like he is here. It is good some games. Yeah, in terms of the item build, it's just double brace or soul ring. Soul ring is, makes sense, right? You click soul ring and then you click heal and it uh, obviously heals you. <laughs> it's pretty easy to understand. And then from there, you just sit in your lane, guys. The goal is to get to level 10. Um, like, I'm not kidding. You just want to sit in your lane for almost as long as you can. Like literally just being an AFK bot who prevents anyone from farming their safe lane is extremely high impact. You don't need to overcomplicate it. And if you want to push in the lane and get, get a, a efficient once you've hit level seven, level eight, right? You can do that. He's got max purification, which is generally what you max first. And you can farm uh, the large camp just to make sure you get a neutral. He also took arcane ring, which I think is a pretty trash neutral item nowadays, but you know, you need the mana. At least he feels like he needs the mana. You can buy a clarity instead and take like some regen item or some damage item. For instance, like Spark of Courage is very good on this hero. Duelist Gloves are good. You know, all these like right click items are good because you're going to play as a pseudo right clicker at some point. So in the early game, you're going to do about like 600 pure damage approximately. I guess the E is a bit less than that, uh, right? It's it's more like 500. It's 500 pure damage. But you'll see like against heroes like December, boom. He didn't even have purification. He used it earlier on the Bat Rider to heal him. But you just blow people up, right? It's just it's just a lot of pure damage. So no resistances help them out and you'll kill heroes very, very quickly. Like the Rubik, boom. You're going to do about half of most supports HP with one go in the early game. Now, in terms of the item build, it's really, really simple. There are some people who like going phylactery, and that is an option you guys can experiment with. It's a lot of burst damage in the early game, phylactery plus shard. It is pretty nuts. However, the most reliable, in my opinion, the, the strongest build by far is Blink Dagger, because it allows you to close the gap for purification and hammer purity. Without Blink Dagger, this hero just kind of gets left behind. It has to run in and all, both of its spells are practically melee range, so Blink Dagger just solves your problems. It lets you get in. Then after the Blink Dagger, you're going to buy your shard, so when you auto attack, it shoots out a Hammer of Purity. Now getting into the mid game, this is when the hero starts to become pretty goofy. I mean, it's already a goofy early game hero with its incredible base stats, but as he goes on Ari here, look at this damage. 1100 HP? Nuke? Nuke? Purify? <laughs> it's just above a thousand damage, right? Uh, insane. With Phylactery, he would one-shot him. So you can. that's why that build is kind of nice. It often is the break point for a lot of these supports, right? That is why uh, people do like buying it next. It, it helps you one-shot supports, which is a big deal, right? Because the Rubik ends up living. Um, then from there, he has to save his Luna, who was getting gone on by Primal Split, right? Drops the W, drops the ulti. Unfortunately, when you don't W yourself, you are very susceptible to dying. And unfortunately, he, gets, uh, he ends up getting run down by Gyro. Now in team fights, I like how he executes here. I think a lot of the time people are gonna be like, oh, I should be, I should be repelling my carry. But I don't think so. I think if you repel your carry, you become kind of useless. Like you can't really go in. It's not like you can run in and hit people without repel, right? When you repel yourself, you can actually go in and use your shard, use your E. So nine times out of 10 guys for simplicity's sake, just repel yourself and blow people up. Goes on the Ember here, E, hits him, boom, exploded. Just absolutely exploded. Then he should have purified a bit earlier here, just like burst off the Brewmaster, but he drops his ulti, pretty standard, right? Then uh, dropping your ulti on whoever's frontlining is, is a great idea, right? The, the gyrocopter. People forget that it's like, honestly, it's kind of stupid. You can't really see it. <laughs> Guardian Angel, you kind of can't see it. And then so you, you just like can't kill the person you're fighting. And so like the gyro just couldn't kill the Luna and he ends up just dying, right? So in the team fights, just for, for simplicity's sake, generally just go on the first person you see uh, with repel and then you can kite out after. It is a long cooldown, so typically you won't be able to get off two in a fight uh, if it's a short fight. If it's a long fight, you can. Uh, but yeah, generally, go on the first person you see with Repel, blow them up, kite out, wait for your Blink Dagger to come back up, go back in again. 
That should be the execution. If your carry or frontliner needs an ulti, you can run in and ulti them. But don't just like, don't go in, nuke, and then try to YOLO and punch a support. Just in, out, in, out on Blink Dagger cooldown. Now, in terms of the next items, I think there's only really two main routes. I say that there's honestly a lot of things you could do. There's like Harpoon. Not that Echo is that useful. It just makes you tanky. There's like Harpoon so you can stick on people, but... Honestly, I think if you're going to go Harpoon, just go Conda. It's better to play more of like a kite in and out style rather than like a go in and stick on top of people. So I don't think Harpoon is very good. I think Conda is way better if you're trying to explode targets. Uh, but Toby goes for a very standard BKB. Why? Well, this gives you the option to repel teammates. On top of that, repel can't be used if you're silenced. And when he's against an Ember Orchid Spirit, Orchid Spirit, <laughs> when he's against an Orchid Spirit, uh, you can just die from full, right? 2k HP is not a lot and very burstable. And so going BKB guarantees he can repel either himself or an ally at any time. Then his next item is gonna be Lotus, which I think at this point, just in pubs, just go Conda. Like, sure, you can buy a Lotus and you can click Lotus on your Luna and woo, you know, like, <laughs> I'm so useful, I'm utility, but I think going the one-shot build is actually the way in, in most games. And I think this game, he should just go Conda and just start to one-shot supports and new cores. I mean, look at this gyro. Doosh, doosh. Most of that was Luna, let's be real, but <laughs> still, uh, it's a, uh, it's a lot of damage. And I just, I just want to stress like his patience in these fights, because a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I'm spell immune. I should just YOLO in. No, guys, you're not the initiator. Like, sure, you can jump first if you're, if they're in vision, but like a lot of the time it's good to have patience, see a target and then go like maybe here you can justify him just going in, but he repelled himself to take Tormentor, which I remember I, I meant to say this, so like you can apparently just do half of Tormentor's HP alone. Like apparently pure damage cooks the Tormentor. Who knew? But it does. Uh, and so you're really good at taking Tormentor. And then yeah, in this team fight, I, I like the patience. He had no W. Sure, he could go in and BKB, but he's just letting the Batrider go in. He probably should ulti the Batrider here. I think in terms of things that Toby could have done better, because he wasn't perfect this game, I think he could be, be better about using the ulti quicker. Because, I mean, it's hard. It could get dispelled by Brew. I think that's an argument against it. But I think most of the time he's just forgetting. And it's easy to forget because you're focused on hit EQ, right? Hit EQ is the most important part. But, you know, if your carry is getting gone on by a Sven or, you know, your Batrider is going to die to Flat Cannon, it's a pretty good idea to use Guardian Angel. Okay, and the last few things I'd like to say is at level 20, take uh, Repel Duration. Power of Purity cooldown is good and tempting. I think there is an argument for it, so you can consider it. I just feel like in the late game, repel duration is just too good. It just gives you an eight second repel. Hammer of Purity cooldown does bring into four seconds though. So just feel out the game, feel out your purpose. In this game, when he's going utility items, it's definitely repel duration. If you're going 1v9, you can take the one on the left. At 25, uh, I, I think it's always Hammer of Purity damage. Like purification damage heal is like pretty cringe for level 25. I don't even know why that's a talent in the game. It's like pretty awful. Definitely don't take that. And then lastly, at level 15, he took Repel Strength per debuff. What that means is when you W someone, they get Strength and Regen, but they also get Bonus Strength and Regen if they have sh stuff you're dispelling. So if you dispel a Gale, a Shadow Strike, and a Sticky Napalm, you give them 27 extra Strength. If you're against a bunch of things that can be dispelled, like this game, there's uh, Chains and there's Coddle Urn and um, Coddle Solar Bind and Brewmaster W, like potentially you're dispelling four things. Even if it's only two, you're going to get a lot of value out of that. So I get why he took the right talent. However, I think the Guardian Angel restore time, bringing it to a 35 second restore time is great. If your team is trying to go high ground against a sniper or a drow, and they are the main poke or a dusa, you can just literally Guardian Angel your guy for seven seconds. He can go up, hit, you can use it twice. In 70 seconds, you can do it again. That's nothing. So yeah, there is definitely justification for the other 15 talent, and it should be considered in some games. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, unfortunately, he went the lane build, so I can't show you guys the true power of the one-shot, at least not in today's video. But do keep in mind, Conda is the one-shot build. And then from there, you can just buy like uh, Kaya Sanj. Kaya Sanj just, uh, tends to be the next item you buy so you can frontline. Or you can go like Hex just to control people. You can go Orchid if they have no dispels, because if you Orchid someone right before doing your combo, they take the 30% the Ren damage at the end and they get like exploded too. So there's a lot of different angles in the late game but Kana is the main one. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, 
Click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.